Hey guys, Jeremy here from School of Wat Covent Garden. It's Wok Wednesday once again, and this week we're making really intricate dumplings. The Siu Long Bao, a soup dumpling. So I've got two types of plain flour, Chinese plain flour here. This is a high gluten wheat flour and a medium gluten wheat flour. And that's specifically for soup dumplings, but if you wanted to change that out for plain flour, that would work absolutely fine for any type of dumpling as well. The high gluten wheat flour has a slight difference. It's got more elasticity to it, so it'll kind of ping back on itself, which is great for sort of holding its shape when I've got loads of liquid in the dumpling itself. Um, but with plain flour, it will work absolutely fine too. It's about 250 grams of my wheat flour, and then this stuff here is a tapioca starch. You can see how much whiter that is. So just a small amount of tapioca starch just gives it that nice jelly-like and slightly translucent structure. Just give that a good mix. And then we're going to mix this with hot water. Nice and gradually, just bring that mix together. And this is the easy part of making your dumplings. The dough just needs to get to a nice sort of play-dough consistency. That's just hot water from the kettle. It might look a little dry at the beginning, and depending on the day, you might need sort of five to ten grams either side. Every day has a different sort of temperature or humidity, depending on where you are in the world. You really don't know these days, do you? So I've got a nice sort of Play-Doh consistency already. I'm going to start to add a bit of oil to this. Just a rough teaspoon of oil. And then once you've picked up all the flour from the edge of your bowl, then take that out and start to knead it. So push in, and the palms of your hands here are good for kneading. So push in, roll over, push in, roll over. Because I've got that high gluten wheat flour, which is similar to a, a Western strong bread flour, I, it feels quite tight and it is quite elastic. So it takes a little bit more pressure and really sort of go into it. What you're doing when you're kneading is you're sort of really working that gluten. So you're making this more and more elastic as you're working the dough. You can see at the moment you've still got that grainy texture, which means that it needs more kneading. Getting tired. This is why dumplings are always good to make with other people. So when you get tired, you can pass it on to someone else. Just check whether that's nice and smooth. Roll it into a ball. And then just push in with your thumbs. It's still cracking quite quickly, so it needs a little bit more kneading. Now, of course, if you've got sort of a, an electric mixer. You can put the dough hook on and do that in the mixer. It's nice to show you guys the texture of the dough and where it should be by hand. It's got a nice smooth feel now. It's pretty warm as well. Shape that into a ball and then just check. Yep, yeah, it's staying smooth and cracking later on. So I know that my dough is pretty much ready to rest. Oh, that was good. Right, onto your rolling and folding. It needs, so it needs a little bit of time to rest. So just a dab of oil over the top of your dough. I've got half the recipe here, just so you don't waste. And then a wet cloth or some cling film over the top of that. And let that rest for about five minutes. I should just let it relax before I show you how to 
roll your dough into nice round pastries. So I often get this question, what is a soup dumpling and how do you get soup inside a dumpling? And actually, it's not rocket science. What we do is we take some stock. So I've got chicken stock here. It's homemade with some nice star anise, cinnamon, nutmeg, you know, those five spice ingredients. And then we jellify it. So usually, classically, it would be pork fat or gelatine that's used um, to make a nice sort of jelly broth. Um, but we use agar agar. So we put agar into it. I do 1.5 five times the amount of agar that's recommended on a pack. Um, uh, and then we've got a nice sort of film of jelly that we cut up into little sort of cubes, sort of cubes, sort of cubes. Once you've got your jelly, you cut it up into nice chunks, chunks. <laughs> <laughs> nice little chunks. <laughs> what am I saying? Who's what? <laughs> what? what? You, you cut, cut them. <laughs> So once the agar's in, you boil it, uh, let it set and cool, and then once it's cool, we cut it into nice little cubes, and we put that into the filling, and when it steams into the dumpling, that creates this sort of pool of soup inside your dumpling. How cool is that? Right, so my dough's had time to rest, and it should be a little bit more relaxed now. And of course, you can buy ready-made pastries, but if you really want to be a true dim sum master, then this is the way to make it traditionally. So the first thing you want to do is take a little bit of your dough and roll it into a nice sort of frankfurter shape. When you're first starting, you might want to go a little bit bigger. But when you get confident, you can do nice sort of small pieces of dough. I've got a little cutter here. It's actually a paint stripper, I think. Um, but you can use whatever you want. You can just cut like so with a knife or cutter. Or you can take your thumb uh, and index finger and just break pieces off. However you wish, it's up to you. And once you've got your nice pieces of dough, you're going to start to shape those into round shapes. Now the easiest way is just to take your index finger and thumb and then start twisting that round with my thumb and fingers from the other hand just holding that piece of dough in place. Nice simple round piece of pastry. The more traditional way what we call pinchy pinchy twisty twisty and that's pushing in with one thumb and twisting and pinching round with your index finger and thumb in that circle there when you finish just close the gap at the tip of your dough whilst twisting round slightly and then you get a nice ball of dough so here's the hard part rolling your pastry we take your pastry and just dust the surface, take a little bit of flour on the palm of your hand and press into it. Once you've got a nice round pastry, that pastry sits on your spokes, which are your middle finger and thumb, and your index finger is what creates the movement of that wheel of pastry. Practice that first, and then your rolling pin goes in, just from your knuckles towards your palm, and then when you come back out, just relax. Push in, relax. All the while, you're twisting your pastry round. Once you've gone once around your pastry, go with a little bit more force on the palm of your rolling pin hand. Once you've finished, you should almost be able to see the table through the pastry. What we've got here with that traditional rolling method is this little hump in the middle of the pastry. So when you're making 
liquidy fillings like your soup dumplings that protects your pastry from breaking apart. Right, so I've actually got some leftover dumpling mix from a class. Uh, it's very, very simple here. I've got some garlic, some Chinese chive, some prawns being sort of cleaned and mashed into a mixer um, and some tofu. You can use whatever you want for your filling. Absolutely fine. You know, we don't want to waste, so I've got some leftover. What's more important is your jelly. So that's been set in the fridge now. It's my chicken stock and agar um, that's been set in the fridge for a few hours. And I'm just sort of going to cut into the jelly and then make rough cubes. And then just sort of again roughly cut that to go into the filling. You can just take that jelly and place that into the filling. Of course, the more jelly you have, the more soup you have in the dumplings. But be careful, because if you put too much in, especially at the beginning, you might struggle to close your dumplings, and then you'll just have mush. Folding your dumplings, make sure your hands are nice and dry. The flour helps with that. And then just sort of give that jelly a rough mix into your filling. I forgot to say, I've got a little bit of corn flour in that filling just to keep it nice and dry. And I've seasoned it with salt, white pepper, and sesame oil. So I'm going to take a good amount of my filling and place that into the center of my dumpling. And then make sure I've got plenty of jelly. And this is what I call the crane. And it's a crane because my index finger and thumb from my right hand, my dominant hand, coming from the top, not from the sides. Don't allow those to droop. So you can see the dumpling itself is sitting in the cup of my left hand fingertips. My index finger and thumb from my right come in, and you just pick up the pastry, and I'm going to push one index finger towards the other to make a pleat. Once I've made the first pleat, I pick up my index finger, pinch, and give it a little tug. Push in, pick up, pinch, and pull. Push in, pick up, pinch, and pull. I'm trying to keep the pastry at the same level all the way around. And that pulling of the pastry just allows a little bit more space to manoeuvre. Once you've just gone sort of halfway, then you sit the pastry into the cup of your hand like so. And then continue to twist in, pick up, pull up, until you get to the end of your pastry. And at this point, we're going to start to twist and gather and then just at the end, you finish by picking that last tip of the dumpling, pinching that together, and just pushing in. You can see, then when I shake my pastry, I get a nice round finish on the dumpling. And you can see every individual pleat. Right, so that's the hard part done. Once your dumplings are made, I'm going to place them into a steam basket. We've got our own little silicon steam mats here. If you did want to get the right equipment, traditionally we'd use a wholly greaseproof paper, but you do have to buy those in Chinese supermarkets and they come in the hundreds. So if you're only going to use one, then this is probably a, a better bet. We don't need any oil with this. You can use things like, like ends of a carrot or rounds of carrot, courgette, banana leaf, however you want to present it. Most importantly, you don't want it to stick on what you're cooking it with. So, my steam is ready. Look at that. Whoa, boiling away. Now, I've only got prawns and tofu in here, so this will probably only take me about six minutes maximum to steam away. If you've got minced pork or minced meat in there, maybe push it to seven or eight minutes. 
When you're steaming your dumplings, don't be tempted to lift your lid off and have a little check or poke around. You've got to leave that steam in the basket to cook it through properly. Right, so whilst they're steaming away, just a quick dipping sauce. I've got some finely chopped ginger here, a little bit of light soy sauce, and some Qingqiang black vinegar. And I'll just cut through that dumpling. I believe my dumplings are done. It's always nice with your Xiaolong Bao to give them a minute or so just to relax into themselves before you open the lid. What happens then is they cool a little bit and the liquid in the soup dumplings falls to the bottom. So that couple of minutes and you can see that soup just sitting at the base of those dumplings. That's when you know you've made a serious soup dumpling. So the reason why we have this little tip on the end of the dumpling is because it's very delicate and you should be able to just lift it off carefully. Get your spoon ready. It's a bit of an art to eating this and plonk that on your spoon. Now it's got really, really hot soup inside. So there's an art to eating this even at this point. You just break a little hole and then you can see the soup dropping out of that dumpling. Look at that. Drink the soup. Oh, that is lovely. And then take care when eating dumpling. Mmm. Great stuff. A good bite from the dumpling pastry. You've got all the soup inside and that beautiful fresh filling, those prawn and tofu. Fantastic. If you can get it like this, show us your pictures. Send them over and give us a good thumbs up.